All right. I can hear him fine. Oh, yeah, no, I can hear him now. Yeah, it works. Through there. Yeah. I didn't move it. Oh, no, you will oh, have him through here. Oh, word, word. Okay, cool. All right. Cool. It's, uh, has Alan Canyon in it, and he's a blind. All right, now. <laughs> All right, let, let me let me introduce our guests properly. Word you know up. What I'm saying, uh, we've got some rogue agents in the building, broadcasting live from an undisclosed from an undisclosed location. Uh, undisclosed location. That's right. You know what I'm we, we we got shining shadows in the building. I don't even know what that means. We're gonna ask him about it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, right now, <laughs> we got duplicates. We got Elder Sensei, and I look like internal, internal quest in the background. Quest. All right, what up? So we've got the Immortals Project in the building right now, fellas. What's going? On? Introduce yourselves. We do it the art, um, the De La way. I am IB. So go ahead and introduce yourselves, please. Nice. I like that. I like that. All right. Well, I am IB Duplicates, producer for the Immortals Project. Owner of Shining Shadow, which is my own record label. I am not B. Elder Sensei from the group Artifacts, one half of the Artifacts. Coming from New Jersey, Brick City. Colonel Quest, MC producer, audio engineer, apprentice. <laughs> we are the Immortals Project. Nice, nice. Now let, let's start off at the beginning because I want to start off about the group, not necessarily about the individuals, because I'd like to have you guys back onto the show later, you know what I'm saying, to talk more about the individual. But I want to talk about the actual group. How did that come about? Because the first project was 2009, right? Yep, you got it. So how, how did you guys get together? So Ellen and myself were introduced by a mutual friend of ours. Uh, she knew I made beats, and, and obviously he rapped and brought us together. We did, in 2008, we recorded a couple of songs. Um, we released in 2009. It was kind of experimental at first because we did hip hop, a little bit of drum and bass. Uh, so it was really cool and it was pretty well received. And so I was putting some more beats together later on down the road. Everything went well. It was the kind of thing where he recorded the vocals in one place, I did the beats at another spot. And, um, but everything worked well. So when I approached him again, about doing some more work. I wasn't sure if he was gonna mess around with some more hip hop and jump and bass and stuff like that. So I was like, hey, you uh, wanna do some more work maybe? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, well, when do you wanna get started? Let's go. So uh, that's when that's when Rogue Agents actually started, which is our first full length, uh, full length album. So. And, and if I could add on, uh, for me, you know, uh, me and Duke was working together. I don't know if you um, you know, the A3C festivals. We was at the earlier ones, like 2008, 2009, and on. And um, at that time, you know, we were both getting to know each other. So he was feeling me out, not just as an MC, but as a, a, a person, as a man, and him, you know, being introduced, like I said, through a friend. So I wanted him to see that, you know, I was interested. You know, he came with, with, with tracks, and I was like, okay, bet, let's do this. But the second we did Rogue Agents, it was more or less, I can see that he was like listening to every conversation we we had as far as like any advice I could give him on sound wise where I'm at or where direction he should go in. Without saying too much, I just started hearing beats. I was like, oh shit, okay. I'm hearing, well, I'm hearing, you know, things that sounded different from the first EP. And it's, I, heard, I heard growth, I heard, uh, him being more serious, and I heard him really, you know, taking into consideration that he got to compete with other producers when we out here, and 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 more or less, it said to me that he was like catering to me more than him saying like let's do a drum and bass album. But I think he, you know, being in the festivals and being around other, you know, MCs and producers, I think it maybe soaked in to him to where he was like, yo, look, I'm ready to do this now. I'm like, I, and I heard the graduation coming out of that. Heard. No, so now, all right. So, how did the name The Immortals come about? So, the idea was The Immortals Project. The reason why we call it a project was that originally the idea was take a bunch of MCs who are not necessarily just veterans and are resting on their laurels, but are veterans, legends in the game that are still actively pursuing the craft nice with the pen, refining their sword constantly, right? And so we were going to have uh, a new batch of MC or a featured MC with every release. 
So the EP started cool. It was dope. But once yeah, you had Craig G on there, right? Was he like the yeah. guest? Yeah, on the first one. Yeah, Craig G was on the first one. Yeah, Craig G was uh was featured on the first one. Um, he was a special guest, I should say, on the first one, and that one went really cool. And then once we got to know each other better, the chemistry was getting was starting to work a lot better. So we were like, you know what? Um, let's keep working together because the chemistry is there. We can always bring in you know an extra special guest uh, for a few songs, and we did that on Rogue Agents because the Dot X is on like a four songs. Um, so originally it was gonna be a rotating membership. But uh, the chemistry works so well that it's been the lineup that you see now, Elder Sensei and Duplicus, pretty much, you know? Oh, that's dope. So it's basically on some like Highlander type stuff. Cause that, that's what I was thinking first. I'm a well, big I, I would say more or less like, I would say like, like if you, you know, play video games, you play like Splinter Cell and uh, what's this? Um, Metal, Metal Gear. Yeah. Metal Gear you know, Metal Gear is, a, is this dude Snake, and he's just in the never, he's always changing. You know what I'm saying? But. He always comes. He's always on his mission, and we kind of like built it on, I would say, a spy thing more or less because or mercenary at, at the same time, you know. Whereas like with mercenaries, you it's like Deadpool. You hire this dude to do his job, <laughs> and get the hell out, get out. We're gonna, with, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have fun with it, you know. It's not gonna be somebody say jokey, but everything that went with the project kind of we stuck with the theme of being a spy, and we pretty much saying that uh, we want to like keep the movement going and we can plug in different mercenaries with every release and, and uh is this still going yeah yeah you're good My, yeah it's acting kind of funny yeah right, i had something happen but you know we, we we wanted to keep the the rotating membership of mercenaries going so we got cool keeps to come in and with sadat you don't hear uh guest appearance have two solo songs on yeah. a record you know and be and be a guest appearance as well so you know that's the thing we're trying to do with with sharing this mission and including Quest, John Robinson. You know these are not just MCs that I know; they're my friends. And any opportunity that I have to put them on a mission with us, because I know they come and do their job. But John is the coolest dude you may know. Mm, cool yes, jazz dude. But this cat will murder you on the track. Yep. And and and, and, <laughs> and his voice alone do it for me. So yeah. you know it, it's something that you feel. Uh, you can um, rely on them, and that's what I mean. It still goes back to the mercenary. Word. Go back to eighteen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. Let's get into the. Let's get into a track. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's get into the track. Let's get it. Uh, this is uh, featuring. Well, so wait, how does this? Because it says featuring Elder Sensei and Sadat X, but now, Sadat uh, being on the hook. Like I said, I call. He call, he was called in to only do the job as the hook, and it's oh, not no, even. As far as, because like, cause I thought the Immortals Project was Duplicates and Elder Sensei. You know what I'm saying? Right. But then on the track, it says featuring Elder Sensei. That's why I was like, I was like, what? What's going on? This is, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, so sometimes what will happen is the great thing about us doing this ourselves, not being on a major, not being, not, you know, having anyone look over us is we can do whatever the heck we want pretty much, right? So. There may be a song where you'll, it'll say, you know, Immortals Project featuring Elder Sensei. And most of the songs say that. But there are some curveballs, like you said, where you'll see it'll say, you know, Immortals Project featuring Elder Sensei and Sadat X. It's still Immortals Project featuring Elder Sensei, but, uh, you know, every once in a while we'll have what we'll refer to as special guests or mercenaries or people that we come in to fill a certain role, you know, Demol demolition explosion specialists and, you know, sniper ops and all that kind of stuff. So. On that particular one, you know, Sadat X was like involving his little sniper shooting on the on the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, cool. Let's let's get into it. Uh, this right. is the Immortals Project featuring Elder Sensei and Sadat X. Now, this is how it works. We kind of do like two shows at once. So okay, what we're right. gonna do is while we're playing this stuff on air, behind the scenes on the video we're gonna talk more about some other stuff because i want to talk about a3 because we're heading out to a3c again i just want to talk about festivals and how important they are and things of that nature okay you know what i'm saying because it's kind of a big thing all right so this is let's get it the immortals project featuring elder sensei and Sadat x we, in our in our google hangouts we've got uh the immortals project we got internal qu internal quests right yeah you killed that <laughs> verse by the way i'm passing it off i just want to you know let's go uh, shout out hey. to Elder Sensei, and we got duplicates hanging out. We'll be right back. Hey, anybody say anything in the chat room there, uh, B? 
a lot of people um we have a, a listener from alaska that uh grew up in patterson um, oh wow yeah so been a long time fan of uh word up all right cool so let's get into it i want to thank you guys for tuning in it's our show we'll be right back y'all be easy and then we got this you guys know about blab is this new like kind of like what we're doing now but like four people and it's random like it things popped off at the top of the hour in it it's nuts so yeah all type of drama all right it's our show thank you guys tuning in we'll be right back y'all be easy peace from patterson to wow. alaska that's like my brother and he went out there in the army what the hell are you doing wow. so fellas yes sir so tell me about I don't know if that's gonna work anymore. I had to plug it out. Okay, it that's fine. we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So hey, uh, hold on the blab if you could. So yeah. now tell me about A three C because uh, we've been out there. This is gonna be our third year coming out there. You know what I'm saying? So tell me about the experiences at A three C. Well, I would think first of all is a chance to really mingle with cats you probably wouldn't mingle with on the normal. You know, especially me coming from New Jersey. You know, all of us pretty much, and um, you know you get to network. And it's, you know, a lot of times I've been out there, I've, I've been able to go to the studios out there and work because I have uh, people I work with, my man Rock Most. He's a, a DJ out there, MC, producer, you know, and he's a good friend of mine. And uh, he does a lot of uh, scene, a lot of DJ scene out there. And um, that's how I pretty much got out there, you know, doing shows outside of A3C, whether if it wasn't uh, involved in the conference or in the festival or not, you know, um, there's a lot of people I know that live there, so a lot of people that never probably got to see me perform. So as me and Tane, we came out there as artifacts. I've been out there as a solo artist. So it's always fun because you get to see people you probably would never see rock before. And and me in, in general. So and, and you know, a lot a lot of people I know that's begin that's starting off, I always encourage them to go there because it's hard to get in it, you know, as it is. But I try to tell them to try their best to get in it because it's something that they may need. You see a lot of people like Pack Did, Pack Division. I never, you know, I saw they song, I saw all their videos. I like their songs, and when I got to meet them, I got to see them live, and they were just like I thought it would be listening to their songs. It was dope, and you get to see a lot of Southern artists that's there. That's not just so much into trap music. You know, you get to see a lot of dudes that's into underground hip hop. Atlanta has a big underground hip hop scene as it is, so it's good to always get out there and see. Yeah, Atlanta's got the dope scene. Like it's. It is so diverse there, you know what I'm saying? And I think more now than before. Oh yeah, because it, it's cool up, because everybody, and there's like I think there's like enough room that like they have a strong foundation where it can kind of yeah, support yeah, almost yeah, everybody. Like right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty um, dope. So duplicates, did you go to A3C? Uh, yeah, I have my yeah, unique when, uh, experience with A3C is that. I mean, I'm sorry. That, um, I actually used to be their yeah, head block for years uh, before I the went Sensei. down there as a as a right now. project. So I had some behind. Yeah, we're gonna one of their songs and then uh, a little bit more of a behind. Back and, uh, do some more questions. Yeah, first, just because I was a head blogger for a couple of years, and because of that, I got to meet and communicate back and forth with certain artists from a background, from a behind the scenes perspective. Yeah, sorry. And then, um, so that gave me, gave me a little bit of a different perspective going back as a performer, getting to rock on stage, and then getting to meet these guys who I've been going back and forth via email and phone, finally getting to meet them, you know, as artists and producers and things of that nature. But every time I've been down there, it's been, you know, I mean, it's been phenomenal. It's like the hip hop homecoming, basically, for us. You know? Word, word. I feel the same way. But we're back on air. WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, ninety-one point five FM. Right now, we've got the Immortals Project, Elder Sensei, yeah. Duplicates, and Internal Quest. So, Internal Quest. So, you're like one of the Mercs. You, you, you. What's your yeah, specialty? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I'm the apprentice agent. Double <laughs> <laughs> <That's> A. <double> <laughs> All right, cool. So that last track that we just heard, that was Let's Get It, uh, featuring Sadat X. Hey, give me a random, like, Jeopardy-style type fact about Let's Get It. It could be about the recording, the writing, just something random about it. Like, if I'm ever on Jeopardy and that comes up, you know what I'm saying, I'm in there. All right, but I, I, I recorded the song. You know, we recorded it here at um, this undisclosed location. Let me stop. I, I, got, I got like We had the Jersey Sound Lab, and this is where we record mostly everything. This is my man, Jonathan Quest Studio. And this is 
you know, where the magic happens. And, you know, I recorded the joint and left. Duplicate is very sneaky in a way. <laughs> and, and this is, this is, this still goes in, in tune with the mercenary thing. He'll tell me, all right, we're going to come back the next time we're going to come to the studio or whatever. But he'll send me the song, finish. I'm listening to the song. First of all, it was on a whole totally different beat. <laughs> He did it, and when he sent this to me like that, and said that on the hook, I was like, whoa, 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 what, what, what happened? Like, what? And then I'm here, and I'm hearing Sadat on the hook. I'm like, what the? What is this? So I'm like, all right, cool. I, I was is always a surprise, you know, because like as far as me being a merc, I'm, I'm, you know, I come in, I go in that booth right there, I strap up, do what I got to do, you know, load my bullets up, I let it out, and then. He come back with this finished product, no different than the video. Mm. All the videos that, would, that have been done, you know, I would say right now, Duplicus pretty much put his whole hand into this project. You know, it feels good, you know, because coming from a group myself, you know, when somebody else can take on certain responsibilities, it takes a lot off of you. And when you see the end result, it makes you feel good because I'm getting surprised. I'm usually the one that's doing all the work and surprising everybody else. So I get to sit back and, and have that done for me, and that, that's a blessing. Yeah, that's dope when you can kind of have somebody, like, you know you can trust. So you, like, you, you it's like you do the alley-oop, and you know they're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You throw it up, you know they're going to get like, it. Like, like, you know he's going to throw it up, and big dude going to grab <laughs> the ball. And it's, it's like that with, 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 um, with Quest. You know, I come here because he know how I am. You know, he can tell me he got an hour block. I'm going to come in here, roll up. And be writing while I'm doing that. We can smoke, but he know by the time that I was up, I'm going there and the verse gonna be done and be out of here. He's gonna do it the next session. I'm going. And and I feel like that's the way it should be. You know what I'm saying? Like we professionals. I watched this dude for the last few years, you know, grow as an artist. I see him grow as a producer. You know, I the same with duplicates. You know, I'm just trying to really like share my power and what I, I have gained in this in this industry to show people that, you know, if they're not known artists. You need to know them now. You need to pay attention because it's not it's not about just me paying a bunch of people to do verses for me on my projects. It's about really me pushing myself. You know, being the elder in the room. You know, I have to always challenge myself. So I I, I got kind of spoiled to working with certain producers or having a certain sound. And I just remember certain people telling me, you know, maybe if you work with other cats that might not be in your comfort zone, it'll bring something else out of you. And that's what's been happening. You know, doing these projects. That's dope. That's dope. So now, so tell me, uh, because the first one was an EP, this one is like a full joint. What, what was, was there anything different or was it just kind of like, all right, we did this before, we, 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 we got this? It's a lot it, different. It was like, because the first one was 2009, this one, so yeah, like four years in between. Yeah, right, yeah. So what happened there? Like I said, I think mostly um, in those four years, I, I started doing more tours. Um, I had just finished up doing work with the returners in Poland because I was working on our project in 2009 along with going back and forth to Poland. Yeah, I think uh, with them. you may not remember, but I think I met you in Orlando one time. You're at a spot. With and, my uh, 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 red eye. Yeah, and then we're outside and you were telling yeah. me about the returners joint and everything. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, word up. So yeah, so you're traveling back and forth and everything. Tell me about that. You know what I'm saying? As far as, because we have a MC. She's out there in Poland right now, actually, mm -hmm. and she's looking for. Uh, she's in Krakow or somewhere like that. Yeah, she's yeah, telling yeah, yeah. I know. I've been there plenty of time. Plenty of damn time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why, why you say it like that? You gotta tell a story. That's like that. Certain cities in Poland is like the like main cities. Like uh, Warsaw, of course, is the main is the main city. But when you go to like Krakow, I call that a main city as far as hip hop wise because. I've been to shows there uh, where it been just packed, and these dudes just I I I, I remember totally this dude brought his son to the to the show, to the show, and out there it seemed like you could bring you know it could be 15, 16. There's a lot of drinking going on. They smoke. They don't care. <laughs> dude brought his son. He introduced me to him, and he's you know his son telling me yo my dad listened to you blah blah blah. And I'm like yo it's weird that you know you can have that connection with people just through music, and you know uh, the returners they from a city called Dangst. And um, and also a city called Tehran, but I try to learn as much as I can out there. But I was pretty much one of the only few artists, American, to come out there and work with uh, a producer team like that, and work with this dude named OSTR. He's like the biggest artist in Poland. He's like common out there, but he's like big. 
he's big. So, you know, I, I to have those opportunities. And then, like I said, going back and forth, coming home, telling Dupe about all, all this stuff, you know, we was in between still going back and forth to A3C. We was doing a whole bunch of stuff. So we was able to see Illmind come out there. We had the unique square bus. We working with artists out there doing songs and uh, working on mixtapes as far as A3C, you know, doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, illustrate AJ, Amon Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, true, true. right, right. And um, I, I got to work with Illustrate out there in, in Atlanta, you know, so you, know, you get to learn a lot. And as going through conversation, knowing all of this because he's out there with me, you know, we able to build and sit back and look and see what everybody else is doing. I think that and, and through practice and, and me doing a lot of work, it made the four year bracket made me better as an MC. I, it, you're always trying to find yourself style wise. So the style I brought in the first EP is totally not the same thing as I brought in the this whole album. And I think the beats brought that out of me the most. And just having uh cool keep I didn't know he was gonna be on the record. I was like, wow, okay. You know, this this dude I grew up listening to, I told him, I said, Ego Trip still, you know, is is the one song that pretty much made me listen to more of the independent artists rather than just run DMC and LL Cool J when they came out. So that was good to have him on. Uh, that's dope. All right, so um, hold on. Let me uh, want to make sure I got this on camera. So word up, yeah. So here's the project right here. Yes, yes, sir. The signed copy, no okay. doubt. Oh, word, yes. You know, what I'm I really appreciate that right there. I, yeah. I was I was looking for a duplicate signature and then maybe internal quest also, but that's cool. Next time I see you guys, you know, what I'm saying. Probably yeah, no around. doubt, for sure, for sure, no doubt. We'll get that for you. You, you guys planning to go to A3C again this year or? Yeah, we're trying to put something together. It's a little different. I was out there last year, you know, it was a little hectic out there last year, bro. They were at that Oh, yo, I, I was in the I was was like, coming back here to the crown again. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. We were smoking outside in the hallways. I was like, what the hell? Whoa, it was flooding in there. I heard. I was like, man, man. It's, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great time, but it just keeps getting bigger. bigger Not that yeah, I'm complaining yeah, yeah. that it's getting bigger, but it's getting bigger and bigger and more people find out about it. So, I mean, you know, for anyone listening, if you can get a chance to make it to A3C, definitely go. It's a heck of an experience. I don't think, I really don't think there's anything else in the country like it. You right. know, the fact that the fans can be so readily accessible. I should say the artists and the producers can be so readily accessible to the fans and you intermingle and there's a lot of educational panels going on. It's just a really cool experience. Yeah, definitely. Because every time I've been out there, you, you always see everybody just kind of hanging out, chilling, just talking and just, right. you know, just hanging out like mad legends. Like I saw like Kid Capri just hanging out. Uh, yeah. Who else? Uh, Dante Ross just hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's chilling. when you do is when you get it, when they out there like that, that's when you really get stuff done. Because they be just getting high. Exactly. Where you going? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, yo. Give me your number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, let's get into another joint. Right now, you hear the instrumental in the background. Uh, this is Major Play. Again, featuring some dot X. So uh, I want to get into this joint. Give me a random Jeopardy style fact about Major Play. Double time. Double time, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, you know, when I, every once in a while, I've said this before, every once in a while, when we get together for sessions, I'll put together three or four beats that I have a, a pretty good idea that L's gonna, L's gonna like. And then I'll always try to throw in a curveball to see how he's gonna respond to it. Mm -hmm. And that beat was one of those curveballs. Um, so I was surprised when he was like, yeah, let's jump on that. And then, you know, he hit up Sadat. Sadat was here with us. And um, Sadat was like, yeah, I'm with it. Let's go. So when they both jumped on it, I was very, very happy with the, with the results. I was, I mean, for me, that's one of my favorite moments because I was actually in this. We were all in the studio together when we did that. And I can hear L, um, doing his verse kind of in low tones, just mumbling it to himself. But Sadat, I wouldn't hear his verse. I just heard his flow. You know, with that Sadat voicing, mm -hmm, that's all I would hear. I wouldn't hear the words. So I got to hear the words when he stepped in the booth, and it was a treat just to watch him go back and forth. It was really cool. Nice, nice. All right, so while I'm playing the track on air, I want to talk about more like what you're using for production and your, you know, your production methods. No doubt. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get into it. This is Major Play, The Immortals Project, our special guest here on our show. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. Speech and Sadat X. Y'all be easy. Be right back. Peace. How's the blab thing? Is it over? Kind of? People are crazy. Uh, All right, hold on. Uh, 
All right, cool. So tell me about, uh, yeah, what, what are you using to make beats? Um, you know, just a quick sidebar. You said blab. Is that what it's called? B-L-A-B? Yeah, dot I am. Oh, okay. All right. Just curious. Um, <laughs> now, this yeah, new so thing I'm doing now is like we're having like our own, like a whole nother side video chat thing happening. Gotcha. And wow. it's trying to do all this is just nuts. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm glad you got yeah, back on. You know, so as far as production goes, um, you know, I started off kind of DJing for myself. So that's kind of like where my background is. Actually, uh, is there an album on Bandcamp? Um, sort of like right I started out so producing. If anybody's interested, um, check out their band. The, the Lisa Star 16, I, Dream Machine, and, Santa, and Sonic Air, ASR 10 sampler. Yeah. I used to love that for example, real to real tape deck, whole deal. Um, and then obviously as you know, things went digital, what I'm up to now is I use Reason, I use Ableton a lot, um, a lot of in the box stuff. I really don't do anything outside of the box. Everything that I do is pretty much in the box. Um, have a couple of just regular controllers. Yeah, so Main thing that I use. I don't know we do the show some days, but uh, usually I'm like uh, tagging um, stuff, making sure. Uh, here, so here, so here, good. You know, and then oh, here yeah. it's uh, oh, propeller um, Ableton, things um, like that. The only really thing that I don't do is uh, I don't record my own vocal. Uh, mm. I believe, I believe that's it. Every single vocal that was recorded is uh, right here. Internal yeah, Quest. So really all of my vocals. Exactly. I, I don't even have to tell them what to do. There's times when they're recording, I can walk out of the control room, and, and I feel comfortable doing that because he knows what he's doing. Um, if if you right now, live. Put in good stuff, you're probably going to get out with stuff. So I start all my vocals with him, and I know I'm going to get everything pristine, crisp, clear, hot. Um, and then I can take it home and you know, mess with it however I want to. So, uh, oh, that's dope. You know, the production equipment, it's pretty bare bones. Um, you know, like I said, AS, uh, not AS, sorry, Ableton, Reason. I have a Blue Sky Monitors, an iMac. That's pretty much about it. I It's pretty bare bones. No. So now uh, so now you're mentioning, like, you you had beats that you knew L would like. Like, did you study L before, you know what I'm saying, you guys got up and you're like, all right, these are the type of joints he's kind of into. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you do that or? Well, I mean, initially when we first – you know, when my friend called us and kind of introduced us, I mean, I was as I was familiar with his work as much as any fan would be, right? So I was familiar with a lot of, you know, the Artifacts catalog and, you know, some of his solo catalog. Um, but going in as a producer, getting the chance to work with him, some of the beats were probably not what he was used to, especially, you know, like the drum and bass kind of stuff. Um, and then once we actually got to hook up and meet and hang out and, and just, oh, you know, just outside of the studio, just get to know each other as people, um, I got to know more of what really makes him fit. He's sneaky too. He says I'm sneaky. Yeah, he's also sneaky. So what he would do is on the ride over to the studio, you know, stuff from like Turner's or stuff that he's doing with anyone else, right? And he's like, yo, check this out. Yeah. He wouldn't even say that. He just plays it, yeah. right? I'm like, oh, word? Okay, word. he's just lighting up a fire under me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's what you mess with. All right, I got some for you then. All right, check this that. out. Yeah. What I got? Oh, <laughs> does, that, yeah, and Quest is back here like, yeah, yeah, he does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> then he played like five other songs. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't even think I'm going to be able to I'm uh, yeah, when they play, they got all mixed up. I mean, like, think, uh, I'm being challenged. Going in a way, like, uh, I asked Quest, like, play with and he didn't yeah. tell me, like, yeah, we're going to rock on this. And I know that he know it's not the normal. I I rock on. A lot of people, a lot of people come up to me later, like most of the time, they say, you know, you want the thick bass line, the drums, and the snares, and like, no, not all. Of them. <laughs> and I think that yeah, doing yeah. features got me like that too, because like I said, I couldn't but be no guy like. You know, That's only have high tech style B or Primo or a lot, you know, all just Dilla, just having that idea of beat in your head, it kind of spoil you. Work. And it's kind of stagnant you too because it's other style of shit people want to hear you on. Yeah. Right? So, right. you know, when I return is the same way. So I'll, I'll tell him, you know, like, listen to this. I won't say it, but I know when he hear it, 
he's going to say like not to say like that's the kind of shit that he probably want but then like it'll show because i did the same thing to the returners in the car we're in the car and i'm playing stuff with them i don't care if it's zilla i don't care because they're playing me marco polo album double barrel they play me all this stuff but then i'm like okay y'all saying that to say y'all want me to sound like that i was like boom i'm gonna play this so once we got like the last few days where i almost had to go home little the producer just started playing me shit. i'm like whoa whoa what's that what's that so he's like yeah yeah you see all that stuff you were playing me this is what i can do and don't don't like he's trying to say don't play me out i could play joints like that and i could <laughs> i could do joints like that so it, it's almost like a little science because like you know cats used to do that in the 90s when we used to go to your sessions a lot of producers are coming to rome and they know sean j period is there but diamond to come through or a buck will come through and they'll have play something and that'll make sure and get on his toes but it's just a competition thing it's like football yeah word so now, uh, oh, by the way, way i have a uh co-host homie this is beat unique he's been handling the whole blab yeah. thing what's up, good, sir. what's up so uh, so beat the Mo's project the Mo's project b word man hey so, oh, wait, talk, uh, hey i really enjoyed the album guys um i bought it a few weeks ago so Thank you. Thank you very really, much. I really enjoyed it. The production and the lyrics are crazy. So thank you. And, and we thank you guys for supporting and, and, you know, just kind of advocating it and playing it. We really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, I know. Come on now. Yeah, we got a lot of people on Blab asking about it. Um, so I let them know about your uh, your band camp and all that. So they're, they're all checking it out. Okay. Check it out. Thank you. Do you have any questions or? No, no. Um, uh, so. Well, um, Hold on a second. There's something going on. <laughs> Everything's mad distracted because yeah, yeah. got a million things going on. That technology. So now, talk. Speaking about technology, like L. I mean, you've been in for, like going from like real to real to like the straight digital. Like, what are some things that just been kind of you're like, damn, I did not think that would happen. That's a good question. Man, I got I got a good answer for that. I can tell you right now, man, everybody listening to me understand this. <laughs> when you talk about artists from the 90s, I mean, all of us, everybody, the good ones, like when you talk about group wise, I don't care, the solo MCs, remember this there was no Pro Tools to punch in and out of the songs and verses. <laughs> when you were in that studio and when we were doing those songs, first Artifacts album to the second album. That engineer dude was not going to be cutting and pasting that big ass reel. It's hard as hell to do that. I, I mean, we watched cool. him do it. We watched him do it. Yo, where he had to split, cut with, with, a, cool. with a razor. Mm -hmm. You got to cut where, the, where you want to stop at. He got to put it together again, back on to the reel, and go from there. Man, listen, you couldn't do that. Like, so you got to think about how good you had to be. Like now when I think about it, like because it's, have, I, used to, we, I used to go in sessions with K-Def and I told him about my man, Tony Galvin in, my, in Miami. He's like, yo, I know you good, L. I know you're good, but guess what? This is why we got this damn Pro Tools, bro. You ain't gotta go all the way back from the You good right there. <laughs> start, start, start right here and just keep going and go down. Even if you stop on the next line, go down. So it don't make you a cheater, it make you go faster. But when you was talking about doing this back in the day, there wasn't no doing that, no punching right. in, no easiness. Wasn't no <laughs> that, that shit was hard. I'm sorry, can we curse? No. No, he's like, no, you good. All right, no curse. <laughs> that way it was hard to do that. My bad. I won't get you in trouble. But it was hard to do because you had like if you in the room and there's a bunch of people in the room and you keep messing up, you're gonna get dudes looking in the booth like, um <laughs> and the session cost. The session cost money, so it was like more like back then for a session, How much was about $80 an hour. $80 an hour. You were, and you're working in soundtrack studios, you're working in Chung King, so you spend the money yeah, in it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Mm. That, that was when like videos were like million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you got kids. Our side costed us maybe mm, 60000 maybe fifty. Uh mm. Ultimately, like 80000 So mm. it was, that was a lot of money. Wasn't nothing to sneeze at, but then you started talking about million dollar videos and it just like more likes more <laughs> more uh techniques going on and then, yeah, exactly. then you talking about set uh, going to the sets changing sets that cost because you got to get everybody to move from one place to another yeah i, th I think when, that. 
I think when Buster came out with uh, "Put Your Hands on My Eyes Can See" with that video with the elephant yeah, and he's yeah, running yeah. around, yeah, he That's jacked up everybody's budget. <laughs> and the video he had with Janet Jackson, he spent a million dollars yeah. more than that. And then he lost to Spike Jones when he was standing in front of the movie theater with the people, mm. the lights on their bodies, and I like, yeah, he, I remember seeing his face on the MTV award. He was hot. <laughs> he was hot. I was talking to my TV. Oh, I'll bust my bag, yo. that. <laughs> <laughs> And and now they're doing it like on their phones. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's I mean, crazy. That's, 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 that's video of like a year or something off Seven Eleven somewhere. Yeah, off and, an and iPhone. Just this wow. like really just about it's about who you are as an artist. It's not so much no more. Yeah. It's been for a while. It's not so much about the glitch because that's why YouTube exists. Where you know once YouTube came and and Vivo and all these places came, it made it easier for you to just put out not say the homemade video, but you. You know, took it into consideration that you had to have a decent video. You can't just put yourself out there with a white video. Right. Yeah. Um. My is my mic. Yeah. yeah uh. Somebody was in the chat room was wondering um how much the wrong side of the tracks video cost. Like it was like fifty thousand, fifty something, like back then. And now, and that's and then you gotta think, yo, I'm gonna let my man Chuck Stone from uh. And now this guy Chuck Stone, the Charles Stone the Third. If you don't know who he is. Charles Stone III directed the Wrong Side video. He directed Black Sheep Choice is Yours. He directed all the Roots videos in the 90s when they on all the albums until a certain point. Uh, if you want to know who he really is, he's the dude laying on the couch on the Budweiser commercial. Talking about some what's that? He was the dude that had the beard. Chuck Stone has done Drumline. He did the movie Paid in Full with, with uh, uh, Mackay Pfeiffer and all of them. So. You know, and and he did the TLC movie that was on on um, VH1. Oh, you know, I'm real proud of a lot of these people what we worked work with back in the day, history. Ever with that video, you know, I'm I'll be tied to that dude for that. So now, so let's let's co pick, compare and contrast. So wrong side of the tracks and pass it off. The video. Wow. Like how much was pa yeah, how yeah, much yeah, business but pass it off? How much was that? How much did that run y'all? That goes that goes to what you said as far as about the digital age right now. You know, that video we couldn't do back in ninety four. And yep. then and then we couldn't spend that less money to do that video back in ninety four. So you're talking about today, it's not even a guerrilla tactic, but it's just showing you where the technology has taken us that we can take a camera that look like something you only take pictures on and shoot videos with. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, first of all, let me thank you for putting Wrong side of the tracks and pass it off in the same <laughs> scene. I, I, I kind of got confused. Like, um, I was like, but yeah, just, just for sake of comparison, <laughs> you're talking, we did pass it off. Um, ballpark figure, it was less than everything included, shooting it, editing it, After Effects, less than 6,000. It's nice. I, I just wanted to kind of compare, like, as far as technology has gotten, because technology should get out of the way and just let creative people be creative. And be able to bring, right. you know, what I'm saying, the vision right. to, you know, what I'm saying, to life. Right. So I just wanted to kind of compare. That's, that's the, best thing, the best works that are happening like that. You know, when you think about Spike Lee movies, the way they look, they only it it's just crazy how what makes you and why we're here today talking to you, what whatever got us to this point today, and video wise and musically, we can't change that. That's what's wrong with what's happening right now with this game that we in people think they got to experiment and do things different change their style do you know do what made you because those are the people that are still following you those are the those are the people that for 20 years me and team been making music and i got great hairs in my chin and i'm still able to make records in 2015. it's a reason for that. it's a reason it's now this new generation of kids are watching pass it off and they see me as Elder Sensei in the Mortals Project, and then when they Google me or go on YouTube and put my name in, they're gonna see what the hell is this artifacts thing right here. <laughs> Cause I've been I've been at shows, man. I've been to Colorado. This dude came up to me. He said, "Yo, I wanna ask you a question, yo. What's all that you were doing in the beginning? What is come on with the get down? What is what is wrong?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yo, that's, that's my prior my prior record, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was doing when I was young." He said, "Well, honestly, bro, I know Elder Sensei music. I know Frontline. I know." Uh, yeah, got that, and I know wow. one thing got it. I was like, wow, okay, wow. so that was proof for me that this digital age helped me, this internet helped me. A lot of dudes mad at the internet, 
but the internet has gotten me visually there where videos when we was on the label didn't. Yep. Indeed. Word, word. All right, so now uh, let's get into another drum. You know what? We were talking about it. Even though I'm playing right now the instrumental to uh, On the Rise. But let, I want to let me get into this uh, drum here. Let's let's get into the uh, Pass It Off video. All right, okay. uh, not the video, but the actual track. Give me a uh, random Jeopardy style type fact about Pass It Off. Oh, I know one. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. John Robinson wasn't supposed to be on the song. <laughs> wasn't supposed to be on the song. Yeah, right, it was so a female song. So how did how little, how little Psy get on there? Well, um, I, I was trying to give, like I said, an opportunity for a female MC from Jersey. And um, she was she was almost there, uh, but then she had some personal things happen. And then, you know, she got a kid. She was always, she and she worked. So I, I commended her for that. But I, I told her, like, you know, if you, I'll give you some time. But then when certain things started happening, she said she had to fall back. But then it was no problem for me to call John. And he got on it. And just easy as his voice sound, he just knocked it out. And boom. On some, uh, so so it's like some Capadonna type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Fell asleep on the couch. Yeah, 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 you know, the, the kind of merc that John is, he's okay. like, he's like, uh, I, won't, I won't say the cleaner so much, but he's that dude <laughs> that you know in movies that have, might have shades. I don't know if you saw, what's this movie? Uh, with, with, the rock, with The Rock. And he was, uh, he came a faster. He John, John is that dude in the Faster movie. That, that he's, a, he's real quiet with it and smooth and slick. You know, he was so the smooth character, but the dude is nice with the with the pen. Yep. Where like that dude was with the gun on the rock. He, you know, he almost shot the rock up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shot it, it, shot him in the it's rock. Like, Whoa, okay, okay. <laughs> dude, trying to get me. So it's like well, John is like that, and, and I think we all like that. We don't have you don't have to be so boisterous to come up, come across. Deadly on the mic. Right. right. Word up, word up. All right, cool. So let's get into it. This is our Pass It Off, The Immortals Project, featuring yep. Nova Sensei, John Robinson, and, of course, Internal Quest hanging out right yeah. now. Right. Produced by Duplicates. And, um, yeah, let's get into it. It's our show. We'll be right back. Hit us up, 407-646-2915. If we're in the blab, I don't know what's going on with the blab. In the chat room at yeah. itsourshow.net. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Be right back. All right. Peace. I hear the strings, the, the, the guitar on, on the rise. <laughs> what up? So, yeah, I appreciate y'all, you know what I'm saying, uh, taking the time out. I mean, yeah, thank you for having me. Y'all out there in Florida, so. Yeah, we're, so, so uh, what are you guys doing now? What's what's up now? The we actually out? just finished recording a song, um, like, literally five minutes before we got on the air with you. Um, we're actually in the process of recording our next album. Um, and while we're doing that, we're still, you know, promoting Pass It Off, pushing it out there. We're actually doing, we're running a competition for Pass It Off. So if people go to our site, immortalsproject.net, you can find out how you can download for free the acapella to the song. The main rules to the competition are download the official acapella on our site. Um, you can make a hip hop remix, you can make a German bass remix, dubstep, whatever it is you want to do. It's got to be hard. It's got to be dope. Got to be familiar with what he does and what Quest does and what I do. And know that you know we come with hard yeah. stuff. So whatever it is, you yeah. got to be. Yeah. Hard. And then once you finish the remix, put it up on your whatever SoundCloud or YouTube, SoundCloud, whatever it is, and make sure you tag. Make sure you tag us. You can be in the running. And um, again, if you go to motorsproject.net, you can get the brief get a little PDF of all the rules and all that kind of stuff. But that's the main thing. Just download the official uh, the official acapella and go in. Make sure it's a, it's a good old classic. There is some good remix. Yeah, yeah, we heard, good. We heard yeah. some pretty good ones so far. Quest about to put them down, too. Yeah, buddy, y'all better get ready when Quest goes down his yeah. remix. But uh, we just got a remix from Chile. Uh, someone just submitted a remix from Chile. Okay. Uh, another one hit me off just this morning from... Russia, I want to say. So they're coming in. They're coming in fast and furious. Producer Chopzilla did one too. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, so, and um, when yeah, is the deadline? Out. I'm sorry. What's that? When was the deadline? Oh yeah, the deadline is August 31st. Uh, so you still have a good solid two weeks 
to get your remix in. And, um, you know, that first week of September, we'll get together, go over all the remix, you know, and decide, uh, decide who the grand prize winner is. The grand prize winner is going to get their remix on the next album that we're going to we're going to release and then the runner up is going to get a placement on we're working we're going to work on a remix and b-sides ep because we now have a couple of remixes on the rebels and some stuff that i haven't released that's got l's vocals on it so we're going to do a remix um b-sides ep and so the runner up will get their remix on that on that joint that's dope all right so now so I mean, because you, you come from like the drum and bass, so you, remixes are like a very big thing in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk about the remix culture. Why is that important? You know, I, I, the age I come from, I'm used to the classic sense of the remix in that you take the acapella, take away all the music, and just make new music around it. Um, whereas the more modern sense of the remix is just, the beat stays the same, you just throw another 12 guys on it and now you got a, <laughs> now you got a remix, right? Uh, but the remix, I mean, the essence of the remix is just, from an artistic standpoint, is to give um, another version, another view, another vantage point of the same idea. You know, and I think that's why it's cool to be able to just open call to everybody, hey, take our vocals and go to town on it. Now yeah. you're gonna give us your interpretation of of pass it off. What are you going to do with L's vocal? Are you going to flip, you know, Quest, what Quest did, you know, and then so on and so forth. For all I know, we may get a remix back where the verses are completely rearranged or they're chopped up, you know, whatever. That's what I want to see. That's what we all want to see. That's what I used to be. That's how I used to be, man. Yeah. Like, you used to go to record stores just to get remixes. And then just a lot of remixes remix. that we used to remember, you know, they would have different vocals in them and change them and, and be brand new. We did that a lot. Right? That's where Diddy come from, y'all. Yeah, Diddy is Diddy, the remix. remix king and take the damn sample you might know and just flip it. <laughs> be like, hey, we're gonna he literally, he's like, he said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> it was only then. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, and, and then from uh, you know, from the that was that's like the artistic side, and then you know, obviously from a business side, you know, we I remember buying like a De La Soul song, mm -hmm. and it would have a house remix on it. Why? Because now you're going to give the song new life. You're going to expose the song to a completely different audience. And now you maybe attract some of that audience and get them hip to what you're doing. You know, so if someone comes to us with a dubstep remix, I'm not going to be like, oh, no, nah, we're not going to mess with that. No, nah, you know what? Never Come to the table, down. you know, because now we're going to appeal to a brand new crowd yeah. that may not be familiar with us. And they may like what we have, you know, what we have to offer, but because there's no dubstep on it, they may not have heard of us, you know. But now with the dubstep remix or a drum and bass or a house or whatever, they'll be like, oh, Immortals Project. Let me see what's going on with those guys. And then that'll take them off into, oh, who's Ella Sensei? Mm -hmm. well, who's JR? Or what's up with this internal quest dude? You know, so I think in that regard, like that, um, you know, there are certain people out there keeping the, the classic sense of the remix alive. No, no. So, um, yeah, so uh, we're, we're just talking, by the way, uh, we're on air, our show, WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM, all over the internet at itsourshow.net. We have, like, another side chat room video blab. We've yeah. got our text chat room at itsourshow.net. Anybody say anything in there? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people are actually, uh, uh, we're getting into the whole, um, that uh, wrong side of the tracks, we inspired them to write. Uh, they all, a few of their friends were bugging out on all the burners and stuff in that video. They were wondering if you still, uh, you still uh, pay attention to graph or, or yeah. still partake. Yeah, I mean, we we do um, a few. I remember a couple, was it last year? We went to a festival they had in Colorado. They had a graph uh, festival. Uh, Tame was supposed to do a wall there, but they somebody <laughs> stole the wall from them and started painting on it, so we didn't get to do that. <laughs> but we, we very, you know, we're still active in the scene. It's not so much going out, you know, writing on walls anymore, but, you know, we try to keep it on shirts. And um, you know, I try to, I'm, anybody that's, if you ever see an Artifacts t-shirt, those are for me personally. You know, people is not somewhere else you're going to get them from. So if you ever see me post anything about that, hit me up. I mail them out. I got the PayPal. So anytime you see that, jump on it because it's not so much about me making money doing these shirts is about really just getting the name and the brand out there because it's been 20 years artifacts been re making records and we still here and i want people to still know about that yep, yep. and 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 a no and a fact if you're a graph head and you're listening west fc 
Scourge, uh, Sir, my man Serge, these dudes did the artwork for the uh, wrong side of the trash video. If you know Wes and Serge, these dudes are the founders of PNB Nation Clothing. So I'm dropping facts on y'all right now. You know, uh, uh, actually Charles Stone, some of the artwork you've seen in that video, he did uh, himself. You know, it, it just, you know, I'm, I'm just proud to still, you know, to hear people say that because like a lot of times we go to Cali and you see, yo, you see hardcore SA dudes and gang dudes coming up to me. I'm like, what is about to happen right now? <laughs> They're like, yo, we used to really go out paying to y'all song. Like these dudes would look like, yo, and, and I got to understand, I'm, I don't know. I'm talking about the older dudes my age, and you see them, you know, you see it. So I'm just like, okay, you know, that means a lot when you. I'm coming from New Jersey, and these dudes is here. And and when we went uh, to Cali the first time was when we, you know, dropped the single, and they was like, where y'all want to go first, Cali or to stay in the East Coast? Like we from home, so let's go to the West. We were so scared, man. We didn't know what it was gonna, <laughs> we didn't know what it was gonna be like. You know, we was like, they ain't gonna like our music. They gonna be like, I'm like, I'm not wearing. I wear a lot of polo stuff, so I'm not wearing nothing red and blue. <laughs> I, I, I had green, and orange, white, and black. So you know, it was. But when we got there, man, they showed us so much love out there. I can remember going to uh, the Con Art Studio there. Mm, and oh they, man, I remember Con Art. Yes, we went to the studio there, and we had to do a. a uh, interview for rap pages and um they they went there we went with us uh all the walls was kind of taken but it was one wall that had a big hole in it and they was like yo y'all gotta work with that when we was with the whole two so me and Tane was thinking about it for a minute uh we went outside we you know rolled up a little something went to the store came back we got all the paint had masks and everything we came back and we was like man what are we gonna do this big hole in the wall so we thought about it thought about it i don't know something just came across my mind so, okay look Let's just form the hole a little bit and round it out. And we made it, we made a freestone house. And the hole in the wall just happened to be the window of the house. Oh, that's good. So, nice. Game did the piece and said, Bricks, I did the, the house. We uh, did a character here and there and did all this. Thing. Yo, they came back and they were just so amazed that we, and freestyled it. We didn't sketch nothing out. We came in there and knocked it out. And then weeks later, I'm back home in Jersey. I see Redman at this uh, party, and he's he, he's like, "Yo, come come with me in the truck." So we get in the truck, and he he rolling up. He look at me though, and he's staring there. He's like, looking at the blunt, looking at me, looking at. I'm like, "What's wrong with you, man?" I saw the piece y'all did at Conard. Me and Meth was in there. I'm pushing him in there like, "Yo, my man's them did this." So he was just so happy. Like, and that's another just for us, another notch in the belt because Red was proud of us. You know, we was one of the last groups in Jersey, main. Group wise, as far as like Naughty came out and Red and Lords and Underground, you know, we came out and it was like a, um, like we joined the club, you know, and they was all happy for us because they was already in. So when we came in and we had that video like that, Red was like, yo, he just was telling everybody about us, you know, all his songs, he shout us out still to this day on songs, just not too long, Tiger style. Um, my, my, my artifacts too hard to tame. It's just crazy, you know, these dudes are still. Rocking out with us, and we still here. Yeah, they wanted to know what your favorite paint was to use. Krylon, Rust. Later on, Montana came out. Yeah. Yo, you know, rap, a, rap now, man. It's crazy with all the new caps and like a Montana paint. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's almost like cheating a little bit, yeah. but that's but then that's got to show you how good these dudes are now today compared. To these dudes are painting the, uh, murals and like paintbrush. But that super three D stuff is crazy. Right, I like I like that, you know, and then, then you know, I take it back to mode two, like that was one, you know, yeah. person that they pretty much like solidified the spot in the game where you know graph artists modeled themselves after that. Yeah, there was a graph writer from DC named Demon Two O Two, I think, that used to do some crazy three D stuff back in uh, okay. late nineties too. All right. Yeah. All right, word up on the uh, this round. I'm telling you, technology, yeah. boy, it's all type of randomness going on. Yeah. All right, so we're up. So I want to thank you guys again. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for people that may be just tuning in, we've got the Immortals Project, Elder Sensei, Duplicates, and Internal Quests right now hanging us uh, from an und undisclosed spot <laughs> in, in Jersey. What happened to my CD? I just had the CD. What are I just doing it? I just had the CD. What? I got that. 
a, a rogue <laughs> agent, a rogue agent just came and jacked my CD. I don't know what that was. That's right. Yeah, 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 I have a time. I have a time on it. But yeah, uh, oh, here we go. All right, word. Had to put it back in the backpack. You know what I'm saying? So Rogue yeah, Agents, yeah, out yeah, now. Yes, you know what I'm saying? It is out now. You can pick that up. And it's been yeah. out since 2013. We're still rocking with it. Yeah, we're still rocking still with rocking it. Again, right people like yourselves and, you know, the, the crowd's rocking with us, the fans rocking with us. You know, it's, it's cool to be able to make music and release it in 2013. And we were making music before that for this album, but it's cool to release music in 2013 and still have it rocking out in 2015. We actually, the song On The Rise, we actually just won an independent music award for best rap hip hop song of the year for that song that we released in 2013 mm -hmm. on that album, Walk the Rogue Agent. So oh, that's dope. this album now, if you've seen this artwork now, that's what it looks like. Pick it up at Amazon, iTunes. You can go to our site, immortalsproject.net. Um, if you're out in Cali, Amoeba Shop has got it. Right, the right, worldwide, right. world-renowned uh, world -renowned Amoeba Shop. Um, we're very, very happy and proud with uh, with that album. Yes, oh, there's yeah. there's the artwork right there. Yeah. With, we, yeah, got guns, we got guns. guns. Yo. I got the I got the <laughs> sniper assassin knife on me right there. <laughs> Big fifteen. That's right. That's right. So yeah, and the, and the whole you know the whole album has a has an overall theme of you know. Um, like you know, El was saying earlier, mercenaries, sniper snares. That's what I do, you know, and things of that nature. So um, there's some songs that deal more specifically with the theme of, for example, espionage. Sadat X has a song called Spies, and then of course El has a title song called Rogue Agents. And if if you ever get a chance, if you're listening to Rogue Agents, the actual title song, every single thing that El is rapping about on there was a conversation we had on the way to record that song on that day. So when he's talking about crawling through the grass and having a, a, a sniper scope on you and talking about Skynet and and um, <laughs> anonymous, talking about anonymous, anonymous, don't get us. We're, we're friends of you. We're fans of anonymous. Right, right. Don't, don't, you know, we're not against you. Um, yeah, that, that song, every single lyric in there, we were having conversations about that song on the way to the studio that day. So it's something we're really proud of. Nice. Let's get into that joint. So that'll be like the Jeopardy style type fact for that one. Right. Let's get yeah, there rogue you go. agents. Rogue, your word. Uh, What's up? It's yeah, uh, Chris. Uh, one of our listeners was uh, wondering when that uh, Sadat X and L the Sensei album is gonna be out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you now. It's coming. Uh, it's been coming for a minute. Uh, you, uh, I'm just want to let y'all know you will be very happy with the delay. We yes, have, we're will. just trying to get everything together. And in between doing this album, me and Sadat's been doing, he's been doing albums, I've been doing singles and albums, and we've been on the road, but it's, it's coming, the singles should be coming at the end of the year, uh, and, and the album early 2016, but I will let some little cats out the back. I will let some cats out. <laughs> nice. I'll well, name you... one cat. Go ahead. Who, who's I'll on name it? one cat. One cat. I'm going to name out. All right. And is a is a cat is a big cat too, big cat, <laughs> big cat on the street. My man front of the joints with me and Sadat, and um, it's produced by my man Devon Drummer. We got a lot of new producers on this album, a lot of fresh new sounds on this album. We got so sounds from Croatia, Vancouver, Jersey. Um, we got sounds from Texas. Um, it's just you know. We all over the place with the record, and that's the only reason why it's taking so long. Because I'm trying to gather everything up from everybody, and because of the years we've been rocking on it, y'all gonna be really, really happy. Trust me. No doubt. So wait, did you did you mention who was the big cat? I think the video might have froze or yeah, something. Uh, if you know my man Bumpy, Bumpy Knuckles, Freddie Fox. Oh, oh nice. Word, word, word. Oh, that's damn. Okay. The song is, is is man. I'm just as as a fan of Sadat and, and Fox, and just. You know, a lot of the producers that are new, I'm fans of as well. But I just want to tell y'all, for me, watching this record happen, just I've been knowing Sadat since 90, man. And this is my opportunity to do an album with a dude that I respect as an artist, still relevant in the game, still got that voice. I'm telling y'all, everything in this record, I don't want to hear. Hey, listen, for real, I'm getting the camera now. <laughs> Before we get out of here, before we get out of here, for real, y'all see what's happening with the game right now. 
we losing soldiers, you know what I mean? Good soldiers, lyrically. It's up to y'all, man. I'm going to tell y'all, and I, I respect this show right now for giving us this platform because there's a lot of DJs across the country that don't play the style of records that I make and that my man Sean P make. But I'm asking y'all right now, before 2016, get here. Make a decision with yourself to understand that this music is here for y'all. You know, we still do this music because we love doing it. It's still a competition thing for us, and we make money doing it at the same time. So it mutually comes in. But we do this, we do this music for y'all first. I wouldn't be doing this music 20 years later if, if it wasn't for y'all. So I'm just saying, when this record comes out, take pride in it first. Take pride in the fact that we're taking pride in making good music for 2015, 2016, because y'all not getting that. Y'all not getting that. Don't front no more. Y'all not getting that. It's not a game right now. I'm not talking to be talking, but when this record comes, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a little ditty-ish right now with it to let y'all understand that this record is not a joke. It is really serious. The beats are serious. You're getting scratching and cutting on this record. You're, it, it's, it's like, if you could just imagine how today records would sound if Mecca and the Soul Brother came out in 2015. If you can imagine Low End Theory coming out in 2015. These are what these records are going to sound like when they come out sonically, mix-wise. Everything that we did in this record, we took pride in. And, you know, like I said, being a fan of Sadat, he telling me he stepped up his pin game up to work with me. I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me. You are the epitome of what dudes want to be like when they look at a model of what an MC is supposed to be like. That's why I say about Sean P. This is really serious right now. I'm, and with everything that I'm about to do with my own power, I'm going to make sure that y'all know that these records are going to come out, but y'all got to buy them. Y'all got to support them. It's not about putting money in our pocket. It's really to keep us going. It's like you treat this music like drugs. You flip it as long as you can flip it, but it's, it's put out to the public for y'all to take. Word, word. All right, so, uh, oh, yeah, so now, let, okay, so some of the stuff we talked about. So the album's out now, Rogue Agents, the Immortals Project. Get that, cop that, cop Get that, cop that. that. So, so, so yes, where, again, where can people find out about the album? Check it out. Find out about the remix project. You know what I'm saying? All the prizes associated with that. So uh, right. write, write it down for me. Yeah, so if you want to find out and know and keep up with anything related to Immortals Project, go to immortalsproject.net. That's immortalsproject.net. And from there, you can get to our Facebook, our Twitter, Instagram, our YouTube, the remix competition, everything you got to do to participate in it. All our albums are there, all our songs, all our videos. Anything you want to know about Immortals Project, go to immortalsproject.net. And from there, you can find out anything else you want. But definitely. No excuses. No, yeah, exactly. No excuses. Pick up that album. Listen to it as many times as you want to before you want to buy it. If you want to stream it first, that's fine. Um, we're available everywhere. Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, we're all over. But, you know, we would prefer if you go to immortalsproject.net and, you know, pick that up pick that up from us. Um, that's a lot of hard work we did. We enjoyed every single song you hear on there. There's, um, we started working on that album in 2011. Yeah, 2011, um, early 2011. And um, we released it in 2013. We're still getting buzz and vibe off of it from in 2015 right now. He's the Chuck D. And, oh, and you don't stop. Yeah, uh, of Chuck. Every, they they supported this record heavy, man. We appreciate them. Yeah, definitely. Um, Flatline, Chuck D, all those guys been supporting Tim us. Tim Einenko. Tim Meininko, all those guys have been supporting us 100%. A lot of the fans out overseas as well will always get hit up from Brazil and Croatia and Canada as well. We've been to Canada. Those guys out there, they rocked out with yeah. us lovely too. So um, definitely we'll, we'll we appreciate come. the support. We appreciate the support. And there's going to be more to come. We're working on the next album now. But this is the album that's out now. Video and song that's out now is called Pass It Off. You guys have been supporting it. Thank you so much. Um, check us out on YouTube. We're also up on YouTube. Videos all over the place. So. Ah, word up, word up. So, yeah, so once again, uh, anything final from the chat room? Anybody want to say anything real quick? Or we got everybody? Uh, one person said, shout out, Freddie Fox and all caps type deal. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Cat from Patterson said, "Real talk, right there from a real OG." All right. Shout out to Chris. Uh, there's a lot of people, big fans in the chat room right now. Nice, nice. Yeah. Peace to the chat room. Peace for checking us room. out. Yes. Yeah, Taking time out y'all out of y'all day to, to mess with the brothers. You know we appreciate that. Yo, support. We support y'all. Yeah, 
You already know. So yeah, so we're up. So once again, thank you, uh, Ella Sensei, Duplicates, Internal Quest. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Thank y'all for just you know coming through, right. hanging out with us. So uh, new album, you said you just like recorded a song right before talking with us. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with that real quick before we sign off? What, when we look yeah, so We're a few songs in. Um, we're definitely taking our time with this one. If you're familiar or if you're going to get familiar with Rogue Agents, once you get familiar with that, the differences on the is we're still going to have, you know, the hard beats, the hard rhymes. Sonically, what makes up Immortals Project, musically speaking, is you take what else is known for, that hard beat, that boom bap, and then you mix in a little bit of that unknown element, you know? So it's like, hey, what happens if you take Ella Sensei and put him up on some German bass? Or what happens if you, take, if you take Ella Sensei and pair him up with Cool Keith, you know, or something to that effect? So for this next one, um, you're gonna start to hear what I can say is you're gonna still you're gonna start to hear a little bit more of live instrumentation. Everything is still gonna be hard, but we're gonna start to incorporate some more musicians, bringing them in, and starting to kind of add a little bit different kind of a layer to it. Um, not gonna let any features out of the bag yet, um, but it's gonna be. I ain't gonna do it anyway. I'm 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 fine now on the side. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be. You know what? It's it's gonna be bigger. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be harder. Um, the song we just did, I was just telling him, it's great when you can finish a song in the studio and just the rough cut, the rough version of it has got you like, oh my God, this is, this is insane. So it ain't no hook yet. Cause there's no hook yet. It's just verses and going back and forth. And, um, we got someone who I won't name who's on the song that we finished before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to get more of the same and it's going to be bigger, harder, bolder. Um, so if you like Rogue Agents, you're going to love what's coming. It's tentatively titled Hard Bottom Season. Um, generally, yeah. when we nice. put our hard bottom shoes on, a lot of cats in the hood, when they put on their hard bottom shoes, they're going to like a funeral or, you know, Sunday services, something like that. So it's it's hard bottom season on these MCs out here right now. We're come, we're, we're, we need right. business. It's not it's we not ain't slipping, We ain't slipping with our hard bottoms on there. Exactly. <laughs> we got the grips on them. Exactly. You know, grips on the hard bottoms. Well, and um, <laughs> and in, in, the, <laughs> in the bigger sense, like before you leave, in the bigger sense, you know, it's it's hard bottom season on us black dudes out here. You know what I'm talking about. You know, it, it's it's like killing season out here for right. on us. You know, dude, but dudes um, gotta. That's the one thing we gotta uh, control. We gotta control ourselves because. It shouldn't be one weekend eighty dudes getting shot in Chicago. And right, it's not cool, man. Like we right. gotta, we really gotta stop that. And that's just, you know, in the, in the nutshell, in a nutshell, without being, you know, going exactly too deep. Exactly, we don't, we don't necessarily get preachy. Um, it, it's not necessarily our thing, but we can easily and definitely throw some gems out there for everyone to kind I think, of. I think we're gonna probably have to on this album. You know, so on this album, you know, you're gonna get some more of that hard stuff. And we're gonna throw a couple of gems out there as well, you know, because the babies are listening and you know, Elder Statesman here and he's got a lot of experience and he's got a lot of things to say. We all have a lot of things to say. So uh definitely check out Rogue Agents and stay tuned for hard bottom season. Word up, word up. All right, cool. So let's gonna get right into this joint. This is the title track. Rogue Agents from our special yeah. guests, yeah. the most yeah. projects. Yeah. Uh, again, fellas, thank you very much for taking the time out. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, thank thank you for having us. Salute. Definitely. Salute. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, our show right here, WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM, all over the internet, it's our show.net. Uh, yeah, so anything else, B? Or no, good? no, just a great album, guys. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hopefully we see y'all out there. Yes. Definitely. If not A3C, at least. You know what I'm saying? So. Exactly. exactly. All right. Y'all be easy. What? All right. Let me stop this here. That was awesome. That was, that was yeah, good. Yeah, you know that was a good interview, man. Uh, good, good fellas. Good.